everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Stephanie, and today we are back with another da -da. Da -da. mukbang. Woo! So, um, we've got Pizza Hut today, and this new menu item was going viral on like all the food channels and stuff. And they called it a pizza melt. It's a fucking pizza quesadilla. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna call it what it is. It's a quesadilla, but pizza. Okay, it's a pizza quesadilla. So we've got That's here good. all of the newest Pizza Hut stuff. We have a bunch of the pizza quesadillas. They've got different flavors like classic pepperoni and meat lovers. Buffalo, they also have like a white sauce, this one. there. This is the meat pizza pasta. We've got lemon pepper wings, garlic parm wings, buffalo hot wings, brownies, cinnamon buns, breadsticks, and a Hawaiian pizza to yes. zhuzh it up, okay? And I just mm. want to say that I do not eat like this on a normal basis because I would probably drop out of a heart attack. I like to eat healthier food sometimes, a lot of the times, as long as it's delicious. And it's almost the freaking new year. Can you believe it? And I can already guess at least one of almost everybody's New Year's resolutions, which is to eat healthier, fresh foods. And then by week two, I'm like, okay, this is, I give up, this is really hard. And I think Factor can help us all. Factor makes meeting your nutritious goals easier than ever by delivering fresh, never frozen foods that are dietitian approved meals right to your doorstep. Factor has a team of gourmet chefs that create each meal with integrity to help you feel your best like all day long. Like those food crashes, I never get that with Factor. I've actually been saving a ton of time with Factor. They have meals that are delivered ready to heat and eat in just two minutes. It's honestly insane to me that they're never frozen because they taste so good. And I'm like, how do they ship it like that? They're always fresh. It's delicious. Like I'm talking creamy Parmesan chicken, three bean vegan chili, and it tastes so much better than eating out or even doing takeout and it's cheaper which is always a plus during the holiday season because you know you want to save money for like all the gifts you have to buy why does it feel like we have to buy a million gifts every year factors meals are so fresh you can taste the difference it's so yummy and i feel like it fuels my body whenever i'm in a rush factor offers 34 meals per week and 36 plus add-ons of options like smoothies juices snacks if you have a lot going on factor has everything that you need to keep you going no matter what your schedule is you can stay on top of whatever nutritious goals that you have and they've got meals for like protein plus keto two minutes to heat up that's it. It's too easy to not do. I actually love their cold pressed juices and their smoothies. They even have these energy bites. Pop them in my bag. Running errands, pop them in my bag. It makes me feel like that girl. I drink a juice in the morning. Ooh, I have my life together. I always make sure to keep my fridge stocked with factors. And you should try it too. So head to go.factor75.com slash bis60 and use code bis 60 to get 60% off your first factor box. That's go.factor75.com slash biz60 and use code biz60 to get 60% off your first factor box. And thank you factor for sponsoring today's video and let's get into it. And factor is now owned by HelloFresh and I actually know people that like to switch between the brands. Personally, I do both at the same time so that I just get like a wider variety of delicious meal plans every single week. Okay. I am very excited. I'm putting on my glove. Oh yeah. Mm. Okay, I don't even know where to start. Mm. I'm gonna go with this pizza melt that looks extra Whoa. duper cheesy. Here, didn't you have the other one? Mmm. Oh. oh my god. It's this incredible. Is so cheesy. Mm-hmm. This is our new menu item. It's so cheesy. Mmm. Mmm. Add Whoa. some marinara sauce to this one. Okay. I, like it. I dig mm. this. Mm-hmm. Mm. You guys like pineapple on your pizzas? Love it. Really? Mm -hmm. mm. You don't? Mm. I don't usually, but mm -hmm. these days I'm more open to it for some reason. Mm. Okay, I'm wow. gonna try that stupid wing hack again that I try every single time. I think they time. break the bones, like mm -hmm. right? The connect, the joints yes. open first? That's what I'm doing. Okay. Okay. At the tip? Okay, ready? I'm gonna dip what did you say, D-tip? He said at the tip. Nasty. Okay, what's going on <laughs> in everyone's heads these days, huh? What? I watch this. That's not how you do it, babe. Left and right. <laughs> this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's right, y'all. Let me show you. Wow. Y'all ready for this? Mm -hmm. Let me you see this. Whoa! What the okay, heck? let me try. Was that cool? <laughs> that was actually so hot, honey. Okay. Wait, what's the? Mm. Okay, ready? So I got. Uh... <laughs> 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 oh, mm. kind of did it. Mm -hmm. Mm. Okay, let me try the bread this stick. This is pasta. What in the world? Wow. Mm. Everything's kind of banging. I wasn't expecting it to be. Hawaiian mm. pizza. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. 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 That's good. So, guess what we're talking about today? We're back at it again mm. with approaching science part mother freaking three. Mm. Do you remember? Part Is two it part three or part three now? Part three or part, part three. three. Genuinely, mm. I thought that this whole series would end at part two because how could there be even crazier, creepier, more what the fuck cases? Do you remember then? then? I remember Grandpa's pants on fire. Oh, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone was like, what's the scientific and, reason? But then it was a lady, the girl, mm-hmm. the little girl. Mm-hmm. Evil. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Evil, he said. But it turned out to be wholesome. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. But then, The yeah. walking corpses. The walking corpse, uh-huh. Remember? Mm-hmm. She thought she, she was caring for the grandpa. Mm-hmm. Is that caring? I don't know. I'd be very upset if someone <laughs> put my ass on fire every day. <laughs> you want me to die. What's going on? Wow. Okay. I thought, how could there be even crazier cases? How could they be more what the f***? How mm-hmm. could there be? No way. And then I found them. And I found more. And there's still more left. It's out of this world, <laughs> if I'm being honest with you. So, to refresh your memories, Approaching Science was a long-running show in China, and it was actually one of the most popular shows of all time. Each episode focused on an urban legend, a myth, a superstition, internet rumor, and a team of science-based investigators would go out there and investigate to see if there really was a ghost or a supernatural presence. Or maybe, maybe they would investigate and find out that there was a scientific logical reason. For everything. You should tell Daniel about episode one. Like the first floor of the building, it was so hot, like unnecessarily warm. It felt like an oven. It doesn't matter if it's winter. Anytime it rains, it would almost like feel like a steamy sauna in there. And then there was this entrance where all of the residents' dogs, it's an apartment building. When they walk by, they try to stop. But you drag them because you're like, well, we gotta go home, right? And when you drag them across that front door and like the first floor, mm-hmm. they start barking like crazy. They like go crazy. Some of them even start crying. Yeah, every single do- whimpering. All the dog, even neighbors' dog. There must be a ghost. The building was old, and whoever did the electricity they didn't do a good job. Mm-hmm. So the first floor, there were live wires, and it was creating an electric current. Right? Not strong, weak. If you walk past it with shoes on, you're good. But when those dogs walk by with their bare foot, they're getting electrocuted. <laughs> uh huh. Uh- that's my like my all-time favorite. No, your all-time favorite I'm covering today. The flying stick alien. What? Mm. Have you heard of flying stick? No. So I've there's like aliens. a urban, not urban, like there's a mystery. This been go- This is one of my most favorite childhood <laughs> mystery that I'm obsessed with. It's a UFO. So there's so many records of uh, videos and photos in the history that they record it and then they see a little stick flying in the background. And then they did some research, right? It's always in the videos. It looked, they calculate the speed for this stick to fly over the screen. It's like an undocumented, like there's no freaking jet even flies that fast. Mm-hmm. But there's a stick just shoo, flies through your screen. Mm. And they calculate it. The stick could be like this small, like as small as your hand, or as big as a freaking building. So there's all sorts of stick. It's a mystery that's been going on for freaking, you know, decades. I never knew the reason behind it. Like all scientific has no reasons. What if it's like a shooting star? No, it's in the photos. It's, it's or like sometimes behind. it'd be in buildings. Yeah, in between the buildings. Shoo, like nice. you'd be taking a picture of you, then then. Well, like a video clip, right? For two seconds, you see a stick just shoo, mm-hmm. flies yeah. behind you. But you never saw it in real life. Yeah. So only on video? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So maybe it's Photoshop or something. No. no, there's so many records of it. Yeah. And there's no... Um, Around the world. Too. Yeah, and this started like decades ago. So you think aliens are real? No, I don't know what it is. Like people are saying, is it, a, mm-hmm. is it some sort of UFO? Mm-hmm. Or is this some sort of... Is it UFO that's hiding in human form and then these are their spaceship that's like... Because the te- technology is way more advanced than what we have right now. The speed, it's flying. Yeah, I love mm. that mystery. Mm. One of my favorite. Mm-hmm. And we still didn't solve it. So we solve it? We're gonna solve it today. How? <laughs> okay. Approaching science. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm the new approaching science team. Thank okay. you. Sometimes the logical reason was creepier or more what the f- than the superstition or urban legend itself. And we're gonna be talking about those cases. Is anybody else here terrified of being electrocuted? Oh yeah. I was electrocuted once when I was younger, and I will never repeat the process. I won't even put my freaking hair dryer in the sink. Like, I've seen some people do their hair, and their sink is not on, and they'll just leave the blow dryer in the sink while they straighten their hair. I don't care if it's not even plugged in. You did that once. Oh my god. Oh my god, we almost got into a fight. I do that. 
Oh my god, you're gonna get electrocuted. I don't throw on the water though. I mean, obviously, but what if what if something happens? What if a wire gets caught on the water and it just turns it on? The handle just magically turns by itself. You're fucking electrocuted, okay? It's risque. But there is a man in the city of Daqing. A what? How do you spell that? D A Q I N G. Daqing. I guess Daqing. <laughs> <laughs> in China, who is able to withstand being electrocuted? He will straight up just electrocute himself for and giggles and he's not losing his mind he's not turning into some super villain he's just a normal dude that can't get electrocuted what? It's a, it, there's no way there's hmm. no freaking way right it sounds like an urban legend there once was a man who fed on electricity he didn't eat or drink water he just channeled his power through his electricity and his hair was standing up all crazy like it sounds like that right mm -hmm. but no no, he was just an average Joe. He could change a light bulb without switching off the power. So he's basically like a real life Electro Man. Superhero. Yes, yeah. Electro Man. He was Electro Man. He never wore insulated gloves while fixing electrical wires in people's houses. <laughs> Do you know how dangerous that That's is? Badass. He could touch 220 volts straight to the nipples oh. of electricity <laughs> and not feel a thing, single thing. His body wouldn't even react. He wouldn't even to that. He won't even <laughs> smirk to that level of electricity. That's so weird. Yeah. And his name is, okay, Mr. Ma. He lives in a smaller city. So all this word got around that Mr. Ma was immune to being electrocuted. And a lot of people started asking him, hey, you wanna come over and fix the electricity in my house? <laughs> I got some problems, the power just went out. And he would. He would touch live wires barehanded, which is like the biggest no-no in electrician world. He would volunteer to help people, never using pliers or screwdrivers. He would just use his bare hands to connect live wires like this. He would just pinch it. He would break wires by pinching it. There's electricity flowing in those wires mm. right now. Damn. He would, oh, sometimes he would put it in his mouth and rip it and chew through it. Again, electricity flowing through those wires right now. Is this a party trick? Hmm. When approaching science landed in that city, he told them straight up, I don't know. I guess sometimes I just feel uncomfortable when I'm not around electricity. I feel better when I touch live electricity. It just brings me comfort. I'm just used to it, you know? So to prove that he wasn't afraid of the electricity, he held a live wire on his hand, which live wire means straight up, you know, the wire is exposed inside of a cable and it can transfer electric current to you. And sometimes it can be as minor as a light tingling sensation. Have you ever touched a live wire? No, not when it was flowing, <laughs> not when it was flowing. Yeah, it can be as light as a tingling burning sensation on contact, or you can go into full cardiac arrest and severe electrical burns. You know what's so scary about being electrocuted to me? Mm -hmm, the no. fact that you can't let go sometimes. Are you sure? Yes, that's a thing. Mm. There's a reason, like your body wants to stay connected to the power, so you're getting electrocuted and your finger won't release. What? And that scares the shit out of me. Like even if you want to, you can't? Yeah. For how long? I don't know, sometimes it depends. Oh sometimes my. you'll get blown back by the current, so then you naturally let go, but. What? Mm -hmm. That's weird. Mm -hmm. That's scary. Yeah. Should we I'm, try it? Oh no. <laughs> I'm also so terrified of getting struck by lightning. A huge fear of mine. I'm not gonna go down that road again, but I have a very good reason to be scared, okay? I'm not just a little paranoid bitch. The outlet? No. Well, I was electrocuted when I was young. But this house was what? struck by the iron. Oh, you're right. Yeah. So, so you don't want to talk about it? No. I didn't feel like I talked about it too much. <laughs> <laughs> that's my new identity. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, that's a pretty big gamble. Are you gonna get a little tingly in your nip or are you gonna die? You don't want to take those chances. It's not hee hee ha ha, you're dead. So it's best to not even mess with it if you have the choice. Now, here is Mr. Ma touching live wires in his hand. There were reports of people being seriously injured or dying after touching a live wire at 42 volts. He's mm -hmm. touching live wires at 220 volts. Damn. Now, depending on how you're standing, if your socks are moist, if you're in contact with something metal, if you're grounded, that's what they say, mm. if you're connected to the ground, it could either be a small scare or it could be life-changing damage, or you could die. But there was Mr. Ma, calm as ever. He didn't even look scared. He didn't even look panicked. He didn't even feel shock. He would just touch the live wire. Hmm. So everyone in the approaching science team is confused. I mean, was he wearing some sort of special insulating gear to protect himself? Because sometimes that can lessen the shock. 
Maybe his shoes were insulated. Again, that could lessen the shock. But upon request, Mr. Ma casually took off his shoes and casually took off whatever articles of clothing they thought were suspicious and did it again barefoot. Oh my God. And he did it all with a straight face. And he's like, I do it again. So he grabs a regular schmegular light bulb to one hand, has a live wire in the other hand, and lights that shit up. Meaning Mr. Ma is holding a line with a voltage of 220 volts in order for the light bulb to even light up. And so the, re the reporters are like, I can't even believe this with my own two eyes. Is there some sort of gadget that's making this possible? Is Mr. Ma hiding something? Maybe he messed with the light bulb in advance, potentially. So they grab a professional camera light, which would require 800 volts to light it up. What? And sure enough, he's lighting that. Oh, 800 way. volts? Okay, so yeah. straight okay? to the nipple? Yeah. He's not even like, uh, he's like, <laughs> he's not even smiling. He's like, this is easy. Wow. Yeah. Wait, that's superhero then. That's what I'm saying. So Mr. Ma did it with his bare hands. And at this point, Mr. Ma is almost getting offended. Like these people are really skeptical. <laughs> like they don't really believe me. So he grabs some wires and he lights up the TV. What? The TV wasn't what? connected to power Just until like he that. lit it up. He powers the city. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Through his brain. It's all just connected to him. Just like that, Thor was born. Thor was born! He can save Chinese a lot of uh, people's electric bills. Yeah! Imagine! <laughs> Elon Musk. <laughs> I mean, <every> Electrified <laughs> Charging the Tesla. <laughs> Everyone was shocked and confused and scared, to be honest. I mean, clearly, clearly, he mm. had some sort of ability with electricity that was more than the average person, even more so than an electrician. So the team decided, <coughs> you know what, let's bring in an electrician. It's such a niche, niche subject that most people don't know about, like electricity. I don't know about it, okay? I don't even know electricity like that. They bring in Mr. Wang, who starts examining the shit out of Mr. Ma, and even ran tests to make sure that the wires that Mr. Ma was playing with did emit 220 volts of electricity, and it did. But there was no harm done to Mr. Ma's body, which he found so fascinating. Mr. Ma, <clears throat> when, does, when did this all start? <laughs> oh, cinnamon roll is good. Oh, oh. Oh, you like cinnamon roll though. <laughs> Try a brownie, brownie's good. Better than the school food we had? Mm, <laughs> it's pretty good, mm-hmm. So, what do you mm, think it is, Dan? Dude, honestly, it has something to do with iron. A what? Iron? Okay. Mm, you maybe think he, you consume too much iron. Or oh, he's wait, Iron Man. Wait, I'm confused. What does iron have to do with it? <laughs> I have no idea. Huh? Iron helps electricity, maybe? Maybe. I'm mean, I was okay. giving a guess. <laughs> oh, okay. But oh, okay. um, it's metal, so. Mm. Mm. Okay. Maybe he has too much iron in his body. Mm. You know how people don't lack iron? Yeah. Mm. Maybe mm -hmm. he has too much. That's do hard. Think? Like, how do you guess that? I would never have guessed it. Like 800 volts? It reminds me of those, like a trick from magician, you know? You know those magician does a lot of dangerous stuff, but it's mm -hmm. always some sort of uh, trick, cr creative trick. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you think Mr. Ma is knowingly doing it? No, mm -hmm. I, th I don't think he knows. Mm -hmm. Hmm. 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 This is all. How many hooms <laughs> in <laughs> today's think, video? I gotta think in this mm -hmm. one. They ask him, Mr. Ma, when did this all start? Oh, my supernatural powers? Well, I was watching TV one day, 15 years ago with my wife. And suddenly the TV was out of power. I rushed to the back of the TV to check it out and um, you know, we were getting to the good part of the show. So it turned out that the wire behind the TV was torn. Mm. It was torn, all the live wire was being exposed. So I carefully reached for it and just on instinct, I touched the wire to fix it. And later I'm laying in bed and I'm thinking, oh, that's weird. I could have died. Mm. I just touched the live wire. I could have died. I should have died. <laughs> Why am I alive? Later. <laughs> yeah. Now I'm like, wait a minute, that was on instinct, and now, now I'm like, oh, this is weird, that doesn't make any sense. So he wanted to get to the bottom of it, because, you know, I wanted to make sure that the power was off before I did this. I mean, I, I should have been electrocuted. How did I even do this without tools? He's wondering to himself. So the next day, Mr. Ma was like, there's only one way to find out. I gotta do it again. <laughs> and see what happens. And he literally did it again. <sighs> And that afternoon, he walked to the electricity box in the hall, removed the cover of the, electric, uh, of the electric switch inside the box, touched it with his bare hands. He didn't feel pain. He didn't spasm like a normal person would. Instead, on the contrary, the electric shock gave him energy. It gave him power, <laughs> comfort. He felt it coursing through his veins. Oh, he felt stronger. So he let go. And he went back to his room wondering to himself, am I a superhero? Yes. <laughs> am I starlight? How can I control electricity? 
And he starts getting addicted to the feeling of electricity to the point where he felt like he and electricity were one. Electricity gave him power, but he could give electricity power too. You're like, what in the supervillain movie is this? It gets wilder. He said, and I quote, I'm looking at the meter of the voltmeter. I'm looking at it. And the voltage will decrease when I'm calm. And the volts will increase Whoa, when I feel anxious. Heck? What? What could it be? So now, Mr. Ma is not only saying he can withstand unheard of electrical currents, but he can control it with his emotions. So from there, he just ran with it. He went to town. He starts giving electrotherapy massages to people. Basically, he'll be holding a live wire in one hand, the electricity coursing through his body, and then he'll be massaging people with his other hand. <laughs> yeah. Listen, it feels like a recipe for a disaster. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people in town started to see Mr. Ma. They said they loved it. And from there, a few clients grew into a whole group of clients. Mr. Mao made a shit ton of money, I'm going to be honest. His clients claimed that he had oh. magical powers. <laughs> that after every session, they would feel refreshed, comfortable. Some even said, oh, Mr. Ma, he's so good, he can even cure facial paralysis. He'll touch the left side of a patient's face with the electrified hand, and all the patient's facial muscles will twitch and move to that side. It's magic, I swear. The approaching science team was so confused they're like yeah no that doesn't make any sense so they take mr ma to a big university they run some more tests and exams on him maybe something is inside of his body maybe he was born with something that was a bit unique and this is where it gets super technical but it gets wild what decides if someone dies from touching a live wire there's a variety of things. Like if you're grounded, literally touching the ground. How many voltage are we talking? But also amperage, how many amps is it? What is the difference between voltage anyway and amps? The max amperage a person can bear is typically eight to 10 amps. But for some reason, it feels like Mr. Ma can bear more than the average person. How? Well, the answer comes through in a very strange way. First, I will give you some technical reasons, okay? What do you think is the real reason? Please leave it in the comments. Here is the technical reason. Let's talk about skin. Mr. Ma's skin. Skin is the largest organ of a person that protects your body from being harmed. I mean, think about it. Your insides are in here. What's the thing that's stopping me from poking your fucking kidney? Your skin, bitch, okay? Aged skin cells die because of metabolism, but they don't fall off immediately. Instead, they form the stratum corneum on the surface of the skin, the outer layer of the skin. And it will act as the first barrier which protects the body from things like sunlight, electricity, and so on. Mr. Ma had a thick stratum corneum on his hands. Must be really thick. Yes, it allowed him to manipulate electricity. And the answer lied in his skin. He was able to use his skin to block most of the electricity when he holds a live wire. Are you talking about... Are you ready? Uh -huh. Here is the non-technical answer. He had a lot of scabs on his skin. A lot of, you know, like when you get calluses, you know, when you get old, you start getting calluses. Yeah. And he was a manual labor worker, so he had a lot of calluses. It was almost like he was wearing gloves all the time. <laughs> Insulated gloves. Like, this guy didn't even just have calluses, like, where normal people have calluses. All over the palm oh of his hand. Oh, my God. All over. Like, he, he, you could poke a needle into his hand, and he wouldn't even feel it. <laughs> yeah. So, so when he grabbed that first time, for the first yeah. time, the TV? Yeah. Was his hand like that? Yeah. Most electricians, you know, they can touch those live wires with insulated gloves. He didn't need them. So it's like a thick hand. His skin yeah, his is hand's rough, yeah. 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 That's why. Yeah, yeah. they so, were really scared. But how come he can't feel it in his body and stuff? And it's because it blocks it. It's he like, imagine you're body. wearing a pair of like those gloves and then touching wires. Oh. Yeah, calluses. <laughs> <laughs> Super dry. They were rough. They were scabby. Yeah. <laughs> I, right, knew, then, I knew it was going to be some dumb <laughs> like that. Now, how did Science Buster not know that? Yeah, they didn't think about it. Maybe they also felt rude being like, Hey, why are your hands so nasty? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Wow, that was a good one. But his hands are like pretty extra scabby. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't think I would have... Yeah, I don't think they're like normal scabby. They're pretty scabby. So it's like... Like the scars and like the yeah. scal uh, what's it, callus? Yes, yeah, the yeah. yeah. So, no, he's not a superhuman. He just needs some aquaphor. That's it. <laughs> now, on to the next. Let's talk chamber pot scent from the aliens. What Do you know it? what a chamber pot is? The hell yeah. Not? So, back in the day, before we had toilets, they had these clay pots and you would shit in them. And then at the end of the day, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. you would take your pot and then you would dump it out the window. That's how I grew up. <laughs> what? Oh, yeah? Yes. I'm what? serious. It's a metal pot. 
It's not clay anymore. Honey, I said back in the day. Like no, back but I'm sure, like in the day. No, yeah. there, I'm sure there's still veggies does that. Yeah, okay, so describe to me what you did. <laughs> This guy's no, from no. Shanghai and he's like, yeah, I had a no, 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 but yeah. so because like during the winter time, it's so cold and the bathroom is like really far. So you just, it's like a little bucket like this big, this tall, this wide, metal bucket. You pee and poop in there and then in the morning, you just carry it into the toilet and then dump it. And then reuse it? Oh, but you have yeah, a toilet. you wash it and reuse it. Mm, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's very normal, guys. Okay. Yeah, okay. I respect that. Michelle. You don't have to respect it. <laughs> it's, 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 uh -huh. All right. So you're talking about pooping bucket. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh, is that what you called it? Yeah. Poopy like, bucket. Tan yu is what we call it. Tan yu. Tan yu. Yeah. <laughs> so back in the day, they would in a pot and they would throw it out their window because there was no toilets, and there was no idea of disease and sanitation. So back then, streets were very, very smelly. Okay. Poop bucket, but make it extraterrestrial, make it alieny. This took place in 2006 in the um, Fujian province. Fujian. And there was a small village, and around 10 p.m., Mr. Liu had been watching TV at home when there was this big thundering boom. It was like a thunder, okay? It sounded like Thor was on top of his house summoning a storm. It was f***ing loud, okay? So immediately, he shoots up from his couch. He pulls the plug on his TV because he doesn't want the power to go out and ruin his TV. <laughs> <laughs> and then another boom. This time, it was louder. It was almost as if Thor was sitting right next to him. Oh, just. Wow. Not even on the roof of his house, inside of his house. So he's like, what the f***? What kind of storm is coming? Like, do I need to prep for this? Do we need to evacuate? So he runs outside to his back, expecting stormy clouds, you know, rain a brew and some lightning. Da -da -da -da. But instead, it was a peaceful night, cloudless night. He starts looking around. He's confused. The, I, I know I heard two booms. And then he spots it. A hole in the ground. A deep hole. There's like a little bit of steam coming out. Like an alien. Yeah. And there's an unidentified object deep huh? inside the hole. So out of oh, curiosity shit. and instinct, he reaches down to grab it and he burns his hand. It's so hot. Oh my God. And he's like, <laughs> 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 I did not say that. <laughs> What's the word in Chinese? <laughs> That's weird, honey. <laughs> so you touch something hot and you go, <laughs> No, you say, <laughs> 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 And he's like, well, I'm not doing this alone if i'm getting invaded by aliens hello and he calls all the villagers over because they had found something right strange and now all of them are gathered around staring down into this hole at the small object hmm. what do you think it is i don't know how would i know are you sure it wasn't always here well, why is it so damn hot it doesn't make sense but some, some of the neighbors start wondering maybe it's a ufo <laughs> are you definitely a ufo, a UFO. Yeah, does it? It looks like one of those chamber bots from back in the day. Remember, we used to sh mm. them. Maybe it's the aliens. <laughs> oh my god, it does. <laughs> huh. So everyone goes home that night, pretty content with the explanation. They go to bed going, "Well, good thing we solved the mystery." It's aliens, it's poopy, aliens bucket. poopy bucket. Aliens, poopy bucket. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and they're like, "Well." That I can sleep at night, that makes sense, right? So they go to sleep. The next day, even the police are intrigued. They're like, hey, I heard some shit about some alien poopy bucket. We wanna find out. There's not a lot of crime in this village, okay? They're like, we got time. And it definitely flew from the sky because when the police went to Mr. Lou's house, they found a tile on the roof had been knocked down. There was like a hole in the roof. So it had shut down from the sky into the backyard. But why? Were aliens just flying around in UFOs, playing sick jokes on villagers, throwing shit at them, literal shit? at them was this ding dong ditch but shit version with the aliens <laughs> so here's some of the quickly debunked theories you know the the more practical people were like it's not aliens it can't be aliens you know what i mean i feel like i know maybe it's from the airplane mm. it's like uh we did talk about that before oh you did no yeah. it's a different one so there's an ice fell into a village mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and they, they were like it's blue it's like giant ice crystals people say like, holy shit, is this like ice from the aliens like water from the from the god and they felt like it was um a treasure so they started drinking it melting it and drinking it or licking it because they felt like it was health healthy beneficial. but it wasn't water so sometimes airlines will freeze poop on a plane Ooh. mixed with water and chemicals <laughs> so it doesn't smell like poop it smells like chemicals but they've been eating poop yeah and <laughs> yeah, they I mean, dropped it down it fell out of the airplane by accident okay and uh they've been eating <laughs> <laughs> they've been eating delta airlines it was holy water from God. Holy water yeah. from God. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It was just Stephanie Sue in 32A <laughs> taking a 
Okay, <laughs> like that's what was happening. Oh my god! Yeah, yeah. similar to that. I think yeah. it's just. It's not. Is it the same? So no. Oh yeah. Okay. But it's a very good guess. It's kind of similar, but it's not an airline. Okay, mm-hmm. we're gonna get into it. So maybe you know people that didn't believe those alien a- aliens was like, okay, maybe Mr. Liu was bored and wanted to stir shit up in the community, and he just told everyone because I don't know drama, mm-hmm. right? And he did this on purpose. But other villagers were like, no, we heard the loud noises too, and it was very loud, and we remember it vividly. And on top of that, maybe Mr. Liu had someone throw the chamber pot into his backyard to really sell the story. But there's no way. There's no way. The thing that was found, the chamber pot, was 14 pounds. There was no way an ordinary person could throw something that heavy, make it fly down the roof and into the ground to make a hole that deep. Like, mm-hmm. it had to fly with a velocity and a speed. I don't know any of these words. That just like right there were also no tall buildings in the vicinity to throw it off the roof of or out the window there were also no planes that flew over that night because yeah they were thinking about the dry ice situation too Mm -hmm. so the police went to the every construction site in the nearby area and asked hey y'all exploded recently or not exploded they're like no we would have told you if like something exploded so they're like huh approaching science comes in and they're like, we gotta start somewhere because this is all over the news. The local news is alien chamber pot falls from sky. Let's go, approaching science. Yeah. <laughs> and approaching science read that local newspaper and was like, mm, this sounds kind of dumb. Okay, I can't believe they published that title. That's kind of bizarre. So yeah, they were intrigued. They go straight into town, and their first step was let's identify this piece of metal because that's gonna bring us closer to explaining how it got into his backyard in the first place. Which yes. first, before we get into that, what do you guys think happened? Okay, leave it in the comments. What's the, what is the object? So the expert welding tech said that they found um, it looked like a part of a gas canister. Like, you know a gas canister from like a hydrogen tank or like helium tank, like the lid? Mm-hmm. But it didn't look manufactured. So it looked almost like a homemade gas canister part instead of being mm-hmm. manufactured in a gas canister factory. Ah, uh, something exploded. Some gas tank exploded. Mm. So the police went investigating, looking around to see why and how someone would want a crude hydrogen tank. They found Sam, local villager. Sam made money by making popcorn during festivals. Sometimes it was popcorn, sometimes he made commercial style balloons. Have you seen the way they make street popcorn in China? It's not my life, that's how it's out of this world. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Let me, let me. That's how I was, that's how I grew up. Oh my god. Chinese what, popcorn? What do you use? Instead of my Bro, so in China, to eat popcorn, they have these street vendors. Here, let me show you. They him. throw corns into this. Oh, I've seen one of those. You've seen those where? Yeah, I think I think Korea did it too, long time ago. Really? It it's like it's like a bomb. Yeah. And then they put it into this crazy protective thing and, uh, and all this up. steam comes out and, and then, then you boom. get popcorn. So all that to make a popcorn? Yes! And yeah. we just put a bag in a microwave? Yes! Out. You give them a couple dollars, they throw in the corn, and they boom! And then but you it run tastes away. better, right? No, I'm sure it's full of like... Carcinogens? Chemi- <laughs> yeah, like... It's honestly terrifying. I don't even like being around pressure cookers. Mm. Because I'm like, that shit's gonna explode. I don't like the rice cooker. When the rice cooker starts doing its steam shit, I'm like, get out of Bro, here. I'm so terrified of those. Another yeah. thing I have childhood... Trauma? Trauma from is um, there's a lot of like metal welding stores, like metal stores. Mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. they make make windows, frames, and mm-hmm. metal. So they're all like zzzz with all those spark of fire. Oh yeah. And then they always do it on the side of, of the oh, sidewalk. No. I can't do it. There's so many of them. So every time I walk by it, those metal fire just like sparkling onto my feet and my pants. I'm so terrified of those. <laughs> Bro. Like does that actually burn or anything? Sometimes it's like a fire hazard. Yeah. Like it could cause a fire, but they just like, like. Wow, so you saw fireworks every day. Wow. I'm in the fireworks. <laughs> Hydrogen tanks are pretty expensive. So Sam's been making his own. He carries his tools to the river and makes hydrogen tanks, which I don't know how you make that, okay? But he was trying. He's done it before and it was successful. He was making all those popcorn. Well, because of improper handling, and because he wanted to make some street popcorn and make a quick buck, the tank overheated, and the pressure led to it exploding. 
Mm. Thankfully, Sam was okay because he flew into the fucking river. He jumped into the river right next to him. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. But um, the first boom they heard was the explosion. Okay. And the cover of the tank flew. And with the pressure of the hydrogen and the helium, it just flew all the way. Miles. Miles. <laughs> miles. <laughs> Fly flying in the sky for miles. <laughs> into ooh, Mr. Lou's backyard. <laughs> and that was the second loud boom that he heard. Yeah. <laughs> He was arrested at the end of the episode. Oh. Sam. What? <laughs> was it nice so, illegally yeah. making hydrogen bombs? Yeah. <laughs> oh, so someone could have died, huh? Uh-huh. Could have, yeah. Because yeah. Yeah. imagine Mr. Lou was just hanging out in his backyard. <laughs> Bung, you know what I mean? Like, that could have been really True. bad. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I thought it would be a, like, poop or something. Yeah, I thought it would be more interesting, but... I also get terrified of, like, you know, every time they, you run, someone shoots a gun, bah! Oh, oh yeah. You start it's to run? Because he's going to go somewhere, that, right. that, that yeah. bullet. That bullet? Yeah. Yes, it's going to go somewhere. Where else is it going? What goes up must come down. So whatever mm. speed they fire, they shoots upwards, it's the same speed it's going to come down. That's why when you got to run, down, right? That's why you got to <laughs> run. Because <laughs> they go like this. And everybody's like, we got to run. Oh, that's <laughs> why they run. Okay, okay. I also don't like it when... um on par with that when the girls are in the middle of the like race cars ah, and, then, mm. and they do the flags and then the cars just zoop by mm -hmm. i don't trust people that much what are they gonna do you think they're gonna like fuck i don't even trust him sometimes i'll be in the driveway and he's backing out of the garage i'm like hey 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 and i'm knocking on the car do you see me what's the red me over <laughs> and i'll be like what a care he's yeah. like i'm not even in reverse i've been parked the whole time in the garage <laughs> he's like not even in the car he's like getting something <laughs> from the back Okay, and then we have the most mysterious case since day one that my fiance loves so much. <sighs> the flying stick. The flying stick. That flying and stick. the second mystery is the donut circle in the um, yeah. field. We'll have get into those? that one. Let me just quickly tell you, there's a mystery. These farmers will wake up. This is all across the globe. Mm -hmm. Farmer will wake up. They have these like acres of um, field of, let's say, I don't know, fucking rice or grains or whatever. They'll wake up one night. If you look from space down, there's like huge like circles. Oh, circles. Uh, let me just show you a picture. <laughs> what the hell? Can I see? This is huge. And this all happens overnight. And when people, they study these circles, it's perfect circle. It's not even like you drive a tractor and draw a little circle. Right. Everything, the, the, the proportions, the angles, there's some way more complicated circles. And they all happen just like that overnight. Okay. I think I know what the cause is. So you know how we have cows and every owner of a cow brands their cow because mm -hmm. someone can steal your cow. And they'll be like, that's my cow. How mm -hmm. do you know? Cows don't have names. You're not like, Mango, come here and the cow comes, right? So they get those hot sticks and they brand them. I think this is aliens branding planet Earth. That's what they said. They're like, this bitch is mine. Yes. Like Have you landmark. seen the complicated? Yeah. So the, the question is, number one, these farmers don't have the time or the technology. Or the want. Or the want or the need or the reason. Yeah. Or there's just, it's impossible right. for them to do that overnight. So the only explanation is aliens. Does that make sense? Yeah. It's no freaking way. Everything's perfect. Oh my God, aliens are real. I do think aliens are real. I, I don't think we'll ever see them in our lifetime. Like, so you, so you we will see them. Maybe they see beings. us. Yeah, for sure. So, the mysterious flying stick. It was actually one of the most popular episodes ever released. It was actually a two parter, two episodes. A lot of viewers tweeted after the first episode that they were so scared. They were cowering under their sheets at night, they were terrified. So, just to give you context, in the 80s in China, a lot of sightings of aliens and UFOs were taking place. A ton of people, old, young, doesn't matter, from all corners of the country, were reporting seeing UFOs and the likes. UFOs were alarmingly flying super low during this time period. I don't know why. Maybe they were doing human <laughs> tours. Like, you know how we have those Hollywood bus tours? Maybe they were doing that, okay? Mm -hmm. UFOs would fly lower, traveling through small buildies, buildings, especially in rural areas. And sometimes they would just hover over the roofs. Wait, can I say something? Yeah. You saw a UFO? I can't. No, I can't. no, no, no. no. <laughs> yeah. Now I think about yeah. it. The flying stick that I'm so obsessed over because I remember seeing some on the TV. Yeah. Was it approaching science? Oh my <laughs> god! <laughs> I don't know. That's is it was that the episode that what I saw? Is? Oh my that god. That keeps me up for like years. People said they were so scared they Okay, it could be up. that. Because oh. I still remember the exact details of those episodes. Like they zoom it in, they yes! slow down. Yes! Oh my god, it's it approaching science. Didn't solve it? 
They solved uh, it. From my memory, it wasn't solved. Oh. I just remember I saw a bit, a little bit. Maybe I only saw the first episode. <laughs> you were just too fascinated. <laughs> I was. So, okay. Oh my god. This is creepy. I don't like it. The sightings reached an all time high in the 80s and slowly started to decrease in the 90s, mainly due to the fact that there was filming equipment. It was becoming more and more available to the general public. So if you saw it and you didn't take a picture, it's not front page news, bro. It's not. Well, this is in 2005, which makes it all the more confusing. In May of 2005, let's call him Tom. Tom was at work in the monitoring room. So he works for this huge pharmaceutical company and he is a security guy, okay? He's watching the screens left and right. And out of nowhere, what the f is that? It was like a sudden white stick flying across the screen so fast. Tom's like, oh my God, I just, did I see that? So he does the replay on the security cameras. It's some sort of long stick, a flying object like Harry Potter broomstick, but it's glowing, it's fancier, it's literally like neon white, more tech focused. It was honestly so scary. Tom immediately called his supervisors and was like, hey, I know you guys sell drugs, but I don't know what's going on. And I swear I didn't take any drugs, okay? And they did not take it lightly. They were being infiltrated. Is this a competitor? Is this by aliens? Not on our watch! The managers immediately contacted Approaching Science. <laughs> I don't know, it's giving PR stunt for me, okay? But they reached out to Approaching Science and even Approaching Science was puzzled. I mean, the footage was strange. It was not altered. There was no photoshopping. They made sure they checked the metadata. And after watching the whole video, Approaching Science was able to gather that this flying stick was maybe 10 feet long inside of a random room in this office building and was able to fly across the room in less than half a second. I mean, talk about Fast and the Furious what? Aliens. What? Hold on, 10 feet? I can do the math for you. The flying stick was going like 120 miles an hour. <gasps> see, that's what I'm saying. It, it never made sense. Did it pass through objects? They didn't see it on camera. Oh. But what's crazier is that no security alarms were set off, so how did it even get in, in the first place? Mm. It's weird. So with the creepy edits, the approaching science team gave their initial theories. Could this be one of the legendary UFOs? Were aliens about to take over the Earth? The team invited Jason, we're calling him Jason, it's not his real name, okay? Jason was the director of the World Chinese UFO Sighting and Investigation Department. I don't know how legit this department is, because technically it's considered an illegal department in China. Illegal? Yeah, it's illegal. <laughs> so, I don't know why Jason's on TV, okay? But he was brought onto the show to talk about the flying stick. And side note about Jason. Jason is um, kind of biased. He's an alien enthusiast. He gives me, um, you know, like the first people who are going to f*** an alien? Jason's one of them. <laughs> I just know it. Nothing's wrong with it. I'm not judging you. But he, like, says... I do hope that, you know, aliens and earthlings will have friendly contact soon and we can <laughs> peacefully coexist very soon. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I've been looking for an alien wife, an extraterrestrial wife that's going to have out of this world experiences with me. You know what I mean? Yeah, he's going to fuck an alien. So be careful, <laughs> aliens. Don't come here because Jason's going to try to fuck you. He's like, yeah, this is going to happen and it's going to happen soon. But he's stoked, okay? Jason took one look at the footage and goes, ah, yes. We have had a lot of flying stick sightings caught on camera. It started in the United States, really. As early as 1994, an American has photographed the flying stick. And the strangest sighting of it has been reported to be during the war in Iraq. The flying stick appeared in the sky. And this flying stick was more than 30 feet long. Yes. Since then, it has been seen all over China, even in the Forbidden City. The flying stick is strange. It doesn't just fly straight, but it can turn around. It can't be detected by radars. I mean, 20 to 30 feet long, can fly over 100 miles per hour, and can turn at will and not be detected by a radar. Aliens. It's alien. It is not in the reach of human technology. What's scarier is that nobody has seen the flying stick with their own eyes. It's like it's impossible to see with eyes. Is it too discreet? Too fast? People will too take fast. a video and then... They'll never see anything. Check the video, flying stick. That was the creepy aspect of it. So approaching science went above and beyond. They did some extra credit work and created a graphic model of how the flying stick must work. They speculate that it has four to five pairs of wings, which yes. most yes. flying insects and birds on earth today have at most two pairs of wings. So it's like a little stick with like four pairs of wings or yeah. six pairs of wings mm -hmm. on there. So they kind of give a visual of what they think it looks like up close and personal when it's not flying 100 miles an hour. And, um, you know, what, what did the flying stick want to do in this pharmaceutical company to begin with? 
The approaching science team, they would not rest until they found out. They set up additional cameras around the office in a trap for the stick to fly into. What kind of trap? It's like a net, okay? They're gonna catch it. How, How big is the net? <laughs> it's big, but it can catch any size. And they wait in anticipation for the flying stick. And that night, the flying stick appears and it hits the trap and the team gets an alert. They rush to the trap. They check the footage, check the cameras. We're gonna catch an alien today. Let's f***ing see the alien's face. The real face of an extraterrestrial creature. I wanna see it. Jason's like, I called it, so I'm f***ing it. <laughs> but instead, they found. Can you guess what they found? Leave it in the comments. Can you guess what they found? They found the alien? No. I think it's light. I don't know, man. This I've been thinking about this for decades. <laughs> and you still have no good answer. I'm still thinking, yeah. They found a moth. What? What? A very large moth. No. <laughs> what? Maybe like this big. Investigators were confused. Mm, play back the footage. They play back the footage. They see the flying stick on camera, but when they trapped it, it was a moth. Was this some sort of shape-shifting alien? When the flying mm. stick gets caught, it turns into a moth? It was a moth. What do you mean? Let me explain. The shutter speed of the office cameras, the CCTV, was <laughs> 1 out of 12 per second, or 1 twelfth of a second. And it matched up coincidentally with how fast moths fly, making the moth blur out a vision <laughs> into a blur of light as they're moving their arms. Moths don't fly over 100 miles per hour, though. So explain that, Stephanie. Well, experts found. So the CCTV camera shows the full room, right? And they see the flying stick go from one part of the room to the other. And they would imagine that it's, you know, traveling quite a distance. Experts found that the moth... It was right in front of the camera. It was right in front of the camera. Oh, my God, bro. <laughs> and, um, yeah. The moth flew in Yeah, there was the no alien, dude. And made it look like it fell from one side of the room to the other. And at that point... The mystery of the flying stick that seemed to have plagued humankind for nearly a decade was finally solved. You're telling me it was a f***ing bug. It was a, moth. a moth kept me Thinking. awake night. for decades. Yeah. yeah, it was a f***ing bug that matched up perfectly with CCTV camera shutter speeds and was attracted <laughs> to CCTV camera blinking lights. Oh so it flew across God. the camera. <laughs> People think everything is an alien nowadays. We play the clip that then they say, Is it's, it an alien? It's definitely <laughs> alien. No, I cut that part. Oh my god, aliens are real. It's alien. <laughs> she said, cut that sh So, um, I do have another one. Where, um, they found a giant ball inside of a donkey. There was no way the donkey could have eaten the ball. It's just a giant ball of mysterious substances. And the villagers were like, Let's eat it. It's probably Chinese herbal medicine. Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, just you no, wait till no, no, you find no. out what that ball really was. Cause <laughs> it's probably food. You want to die. So uh, that's it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure to leave your comments of what you genuinely thought was the answer to these. And don't be smart with it. I will know if you watched all the answers and you're like, you know what, I'm just so smart. I knew all of these, every single one of them. Because a moth, really, you knew that one? That's crazy to me, okay? So... Make sure to leave it in the comments and make sure to check out Factor for some delicious meals and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye!